Hi everybody, um, I'm so sorry I couldn't be there for your Latin lesson today, but I thought I'd do something a bit random and record it. Um, so here we are. Um, before we get started, I should say, ladies and gents, I will be back in school tomorrow and I will be checking the presentation in your books. So, um, because I am not there does not mean that I don't expect the highest possible standards. So let's get going. Um, you can see up, he up, up here, um, we have got our motto for this term, carpe diem, seize the day. Now, diem is a word that you will spot in our translation today, um, meaning day. So seize the day, um, take the opportunity, and we're going to do some fantastic work today. Before we get started, um, the teacher who is in the classroom with you is going to hold call this question. I'm going to move my face out of the way so you can see this picture. So the teacher who is in the classroom with you is going to press pause so that um, you can have 30 seconds thinking time. And I want you to think about the myth that we studied last week in, I don't know which way I'm pointing today, involving these two characters here. And she could ask anybody in the room to tell her what they know about the myth of Perseus and Medusa. And I want to, I want you guys to make sure that you are using the language structure there. For some reason, there's a random capital T in the middle of that sentence. So forgive me for that. Um, so pause the video here have a bit of thinking time and then I would like you to tell the teacher who is with you what you can remember. Okay, fantastic. Well, I'm hoping that you remembered lots of things. Um, I will be asking you about that again next week when I am back in the classroom with you. Um, to get us warmed up, I have got another vocabulary cold call and I'm going to move myself out of the way my face is, I'm really sorry, I think I'm cutting off the top of Arthur Weasley's head. Let me see if I can move him down. That's not ideal. Fantastic. So um, the teacher who is with you is going to pause this video again. You have seen this slide before. So I want you to have 30 seconds thinking time and look at all the words that are in red around this picture of the Weasley family from Harry Potter. I'm going to read them out loud to you. And I want you to think about what they mean. So the meaning in English. And also there are some words there that are slightly different in their endings. So I want you to see if you can remember the different endings and what they mean as well. So we have got magus and mega. We've got pater and mater. We've got frater and soror, and we've got geminos. So pause the video here. Fantastic. And the words that I will give you the meanings of them now, magus is wizard, and mega is witch. Pater is father or dad, and mater is mother. And remember, we talked last week about the maternity ward in a hospital which is where a lady goes to have a baby when she becomes a mother so always try and remember that one um we talked about um star signs last week and geminos means twins and frater is brother and soror is so, uh, sister so well done if you have managed to remember these now we're going to move on. We have got two new words. I'm going to move myself again today. And these words will be relevant in our translation today. So before we get started, um, pronunciation isn't huge, isn't something we need to worry about too much. But the letter V in Latin is pronounced as a W. So this word is pronounced salve and it means hello. This means hello if you are talking to one person. So if I walked into the room and saw uh, little Jimmy, let's make him up. Little Jimmy, one person, I say hello to him and I say salve. 
If I walk into a classroom and I see a whole class of children, I would say salwete, which means hello again. Both words mean hello, but this hello is when we are speaking to more than one person. Now, I know that we've got some fantastically intelligent children in school who speak more than one language. And I would like you to pause the video here and talk with the teacher in the room about any languages that we might speak among us that have different words if you are speaking to one person or more than one person. OK, now we're going to test this knowledge. I'm going to go quite quickly through these because I think you'll be great at it. Remember, salwe is when you're speaking to one person and this word, I can't point in the right direction. I think my laptop is mirroring my face. Um, salwete, this word here on the screen, is for when you are speaking to two or more people. So we're going to choose salwe or salwete. So the chat with the ponytail there would say salwe. Well done, because he's just speaking to one friend. Okay, let's try another one. We've got a headmaster in assembly. And you are right, he would say salwete, because he's speaking to lots of people. We have got my favourite TV presenter, I listen to her in the mornings whilst I'm getting ready. She is speaking to more than one person, presuming that there's more than one person uh, watching Good Morning Britain on any particular day. So she would say, um, were she speaking Latin, she would say salwete, because she's speaking to more than one person. And the last one. Mum is picking up her son after school and she is speaking to one person only. So she, in this instance, would say salwe. Now, see if you can remember those because we're going to use them in our translation. In the classroom, I have left some textbooks. So I would like you to pause the video and find page six of your textbook. I have not put screenshots of this textbook in the video uh, because I didn't want to break any rules. But you are going to find a comic strip in on page six and we're going to translate it together. Pause the video and get your comic strip ready. Page six in the textbook. Fantastic. Now, um, a few top tips when we're doing some translations. The first thing I want you to do is keep your eyes peeled for names. We know uh, when we find a name in Latin because it is the only word that is going to make use of a capital letter. So any word you find um, that has a capital letter will be a name. As we know in Latin, they weren't big on capital letters um, at the begin beginning of sentences. They just didn't do it. So any word you find with a capital letter is definitely a name. Um, they also didn't really use much punctuation, um, but they have used punctuation in the textbook. See, I've got my copy here. They did use punctuation in the textbook because we as English speakers are used to seeing it um, as readers as well. Now, I am going to go uh, one box at a time. And I have given you a blank copy of this comic strip and it is already stuck into your purple exercise books. So I would like you to translate the first few boxes with me um, and then the rest I'm going to ask you to do on your own. Now you are going to write in the blank spaces on the um, comic strip that I've given you, you are going to write in English. Uh, if your fountain pens don't work, um, please use black biros instead. I've left some of those there for you. Um, so let's get cracking. Box number one, we're going to do it together. So box number one. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for names. And I can see that Claudia there is a name. I can also see two words that I know. We have those in our warm up. So I know that both of those words at the beginning, salwe and salwete, both mean hello. And the other word, omnes, I'm not so sure about. So I am going to check my vocab list on page seven. And I'm going to reveal the answer. So pause the video, make sure you have got your answer ready. You might want to write it in the box. And are you ready for the answer? 
the answer is hello Claudia or hello Claudia and the uh, lady in the orange dress and her son presumably say back hello everyone right we're going to try one more together and then the rest I would like you to have a go on your own so this is the one we're going to do together so if you've got your whiteboard jot it down or pop it straight into the blank um into the blank comic strip forgot the word so um first thing I'm going to do is look for names I can see a name there um, as we know, male names during the Roman Empire usually ended in us. So this is Rufus rather than Rufe, um, but the end, uh, the ending has changed because it's speaking. So we know we've got a name and we know the other word that we are using. So get your answer written in English in your blank um, comic strip and I will reveal the answer. saying hello Rufus. Fantastic. Now the rest of the boxes I'm going to ask you to go off and do those independently so please pause the video now. Don't forget those top tips. Look for names first then look for words that you already know or already recognize and if there are words that you do not know you're going to check the vocabulary list on page seven. All the words you need for this translation are there okay and when you unpause the video I am simply going to reveal the answers. So when you unpause the video, I want you to be ready with your colouring crayon to mark your own work. I want you to know straight away when you've got the answers correct. Okay, good luck. Okie doke, so I am guessing now that you are all finished, you have written all your English answers into your uh, blank uh, comic strip. I keep forgetting that word today. I think it must be because it's Sunday. Um, so here are the answers. Get your colouring crayon ready to mark. Expectatissimus es veni donum tibi habeo. So this means you are very welcome. Come, I have a present for you. Donum tibi habeo, Felix Diaz tibi sit. The answer is, and I have a present for you. Happy birthday. Um, just a quick one about these little marks, um, these little straight lines. They are called macrons and you find them above uh, letters in Latin. They are always above vowels. Um, you don't need to worry too much about remembering exactly where they all go. Um, if you can, then fab, but it's not the end of the world. Um, and the purpose of them is to make the vowel sound, vowel sound longer. So instead of saying donum, you would say donum. So can you hear the difference? Donum, donum. Gratias tibi ago, quam pulcher est said quid est. I thank you, how beautiful it is, but what is it? Medusa est, said quiz Medusa est. Medusa famosa est, sedete omnes. Oh, I've got a pop up there, sorry if you can see that. Sedete omnes, olim. It or she is Medusa, but who is Medusa? Medusa is famous. Sit down everyone, once upon a time. So she's getting ready there to tell everyone the story of Medusa. Now, if you manage to complete that task really quickly, there is part two to this video, um, which gives you a much more difficult translation. So click on the, uh, link in the description box below. Um, I have sent the link for the second video to um, your teacher for today as well. Um, and this one is much tougher. So I want you to challenge yourselves um, and see if you can um, do a more difficult translation. So check out the next video. Well done today. See you soon. Bye.